Hello, this is Coach Brock. Welcome to the agenda, a constructive way to take batting practice, providing a variety of skills to help the hitter best utilize the Super 8 system. The agenda can be used with pitching machines or with batting practice pitching. Super 8 hitting agenda. It is comprised of three major areas. Agendas together, one after the other, one, two, and three, that will take care of three of the more difficult things to do in hitting. First of all, we're going to have agenda one, which are read drills. Many times when we'd have players who were struggling with their hitting, and we'd sit down with them and we'd say, what do you think is wrong? and we'd always usually get the answer, Coach, I'm not seeing the ball well. So we've done a lot of things to help hitters to see the ball better. This has to take precedence over everything else, that you're reading your pitches, you're seeing them well, and you have an idea of how you're going to handle each pitch within the framework of the strike zone. Now we have five agendas here which we will be demonstrating for you. But first, I would like to explain each one in some detail. First of all, there is what we call the loose body action, which is full take. One of the sayings we have for that is, it is great to be excited to hit, but it is not so great to be an excited hitter. So what we want our hitter to do in this case, is to be able to get up at home plate, gain some confidence by Every time he puts his back foot into the batter's box, he self-talks. He tells himself, I'm going to rip the ball. Confidence is a major factor. 100% confidence is needed to be the kind of hitter that you want to be. So full take loose body is just having everything fall apart. Basically, what we're doing there is standing tall in a soft body. Stride take is another way to take the pitch. In stride take, we're going to give away the stride to the pitch. We will stride when the pitcher throws the ball. So in striding when the pitcher throws the ball, we're going to commit our stride in the same place with it directly ahead, and we're going to stride only at release. The stride Take is a take that we would use if the pitch were an obvious ball. It was an easy, it would be an easy pitch to read. Number three would be drive take. And in drive take, we want to give away not only our stride, but we're going to give away our pivot. So we're going to load, stride, and pivot. And even though we're pivoting, we're still going to take the pitch. We'll take the pitch in a in what we call our a b stage where we commit hips we commit the pivot but we still do not commit the hands a b c comes in our number four which will allow us then to really work on what we call the three criticals and i'll just try to put this over here in the light the three criticals as they come out on your poster number three number four and number five, completion of stride, drive action, contact. So if you go back, if we were to take our stride take, we would take the pitch at this point. If we were to do our drive take, we would take it at this point. So we're going to call this A, B, and C. In other words, we're going to cross-reference these three steps. So not only are there steps three, four, and five, but now we're going to make them A, B, and C. And the reason why we do that is, is obvious. In order to be the best hitter that we can be, we must learn to train our hips and discipline our hands. And in order to do that, A, B, C drills and A, B drills are gonna, will be a big part of the agenda program. And then number five is form and technique. We'll allow for the pitch to go by. We will have read the pitch. 
we would have identified the pitch and then we would have take a form swing after the pitch has gone past us. So in these first five steps, what we want to do is see the ball better. Now we have a big way to do that. These are the nine windows. These three pitches would be at the front elbow. So this is sort of like elbow zone. These three here are at the waistband. These three are at the knees. So this covers our strike zone. And these are the nine basic areas where we can identify the pitch so that we better recognize what the pitch is. If we want to go through the windows, for an example, a right-handed hitter looking out into the board, these windows would be numbered one, two, three, outside to a right-handed hitter, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And of course, that's just the opposite for the left-handed. So down and away to the right-handed would be a one. Down and away to a left-handed would be three. Right down the middle of the plate, eight, five, and two. And even we would add numbers. For an example, below this level, we'd call this minus one if it were a ball. Minus two below this two. Minus three. If the pitch were inside or outside, this would be one X too far inside to a left hander, too far outside to a right hander. Three X too far inside to the right hander, too far outside to the left hander. Four X too far inside or outside. This is six X. This is nine X. This is seven X. What if the pitch is too high? This would be nine plus. This would be eight plus. This would be seven plus. So not only are we going to identify the, the balls or the pitches that are in the strike zone, we're also going to we'll identify pitches that are outside of the strike zone. What we also want our hitters to do in each of those five steps would be to identify the pitch and identify whether or not they got percussion on their hits and identify then everything in the nine windows. So if you can understand how a bat would go to the ball, and this is not lined up for me correctly in the strike zone, but let's say a hitter's bat that would come inside the ball for a right-hander to hit a five ball, that bat would be slightly below to get the best cut on that ball. And not only that, but to get that head-on collision on impact. Rather than have the bat come around and hook that pitch outside, or approach the ball from here, or even approach the ball from here. So we want the bat to come inside, the bat head drops, and now it will ride directly into the nose of the ball. When we're doing stride takes, red buttons, we are looking at the target. We call these the target or the bullseyes on each ball, and that's what we would want to look at. If I were to be throwing darts at a dart target, I certainly wouldn't want to be looking at the outer rim. I want to be able to focus in on the bullseye because that's going to give me my best result. We dress up these balls with what we call cut lines. So your cut lines are these stripes, and this is where the bat head should go through the ball in those cut lines. For an example, if we're a right-hander and that pitch was at the waistband down the middle, that would be where we'd cut that ball. We would not want to cut that ball level, nor this level, nor this level, so the bat would rotate according to the cut lines. We do two drills with these, which we show in our basic drills, where our hitter will touch the ball in this position, and then, whether it's a right-hander with the red, or a left-hander would be on this side with the black, on this pitch here, here's the right-hander's cut line. Now, all of these cut lines would put your bat exactly where it needs to be to get the best hit. What our hitters are reading in stride tape are the bullseyes, the red zones for the bullseyes. What they will read when they do drive take or when they do form and technique or ABC will be the cut lines. 
And so you have a red line cut line for the right-handed hitters. We have a black line cut line for left-handed hitters. As we go to agenda two, now we begin to put our strokes in action. Agenda one reads, see the ball better. Agenda two, contact. When we pull the trigger, we want to hit ball. We don't want constant swing and miss. So we will do everything we can to give ourselves proficiency in contact. We start off with what we call AB snap to contact. And again, all of these strokes are gonna go straight to the ball. There are no swings in these strokes. These strokes are direct strokes. Our two hands holding the bat, in between these two hands, there's a fulcrum. What we want to have happen is this bottom hand is going to pull the knob of the bat. It has no eyes. However, this hand has four. All of these eyes set up on top of the bat. So if you can, with your bat, understand the principle. Eyes up to the sky. As we go to the ball, eyes remain up. And as we direct the stroke, eyes go forward. With most hitters, these eyes will roll out and come around in a swinging action. This action is not a swinging action, but it's an action which goes head on or direct to the pitch rather than circle, have a circle action, which is not the best action. So what we work on to get that is to go AB, from AB, we'll just snap the bat, put it in place of the ball. All we want to do is have the feeling of the bat going into the pitch head on each and every time. You can really work AB snap and get it down to the point whereby every contact is a solid contact. By going directly to the pitch, we then decrease our timing problems. Our timing will always be better if our bat goes in a head-on, direct stroke. One way that we can understand how impact works, let's put it in the example of automobiles when they have collisions. First of all, if we look at these cars here, we see one car coming in a circle back to the back end of this car, the other one coming to the front end. And as this car moves in this direction here, we can see that the collision, if it's a little late, will hit the rear end of the car in what is called a side-on. That is not such a terrible collision, although it's not a great one either. The other collision could occur or could be missed as this car comes in a circle here, and if the timing is not correct, then that contact would not be made, but this car would arrive a little soon or even this car could arrive a little late. And this kind of gives us an idea of what arcing and swinging, how it occurs when a bat comes against the ball, how it's not as effective as the head-on collision. So the objective then, in this collision here, timing is not a factor. If this car arrives soon and the contact is late, it's still a solid contact. If this car arrives soon, sooner than impact, still have a solid contact. So I, we sort of have here, the, while these collisions have are smaller in nature, this collision here is the worst kind. So not a good thing for automobiles, but it's a very good thing for the bat. If we replace these and we put the bats in order, this could be a right-hander swinging here and we'll put a baseball in here so this is the the bat as it comes in a sweep as it gets into a position where it if you hit it soon you will hook it if you if you hit it uh, too soon should I say you will cue ball it if you hit it a little bit later or even in good timing because of the angle of the bat to the ball, it could be a foul ball, or it could be just fair down the third base line in a hook action. The other bat coming from the other direction could be the left hand of swinging, but the point of it all is this. You don't want to have your bat in an arc. 
Now, crazy enough, in hitting, these all sort of begin in, in this fashion because of hook of sweeps and loops and having then a very poor chance to make the best contact with the ball. So if I can take all of these lines out and we can concentrate only on the line that goes directly to the ball, you can understand that if the hitter is in position, drops the bat head, has the bat head come in a direct line with the ball, then this is where we get the best impact. Not only that, but our timing does not have to be so critical because if we do hit this ball a little soon, we still have a solid contact. If we hit this ball late, then we still have a solid contact. So the objective of the cut lines that are on the ball board are to get the right cut on the ball which places the bat head in line with the pitch early so that the ball bat comes head on into the ball rather than arrive over the top or arrive at either side of the ball. So the cut line is that line which is a direct line to the pitch. So all of these drills here are going to require that the hitter would pivot, hold on his pivot, and all he's going to do is snap his hands. In this case here, he only snaps the contact, and all of these here, he will go through the ball, and this here is the flex drill where he will pivot half as much, and these are, of course are his oppos. The split hand drill to help the front arm to get inside the ball quicker and more efficiently. So your contact drills will be demonstrated and they're the best drills to help the hitter to get the very best contact. As we move from Agenda 2 to Agenda 3, we get into our specialty drills. And our specialty drills have six parts. Part number one, slow motion batting practice. Slow motion batting practice is the most fun drill of them all. What we tell the hitters and what the hitters are trying to do here, they don't care if the ball goes by them. They are going to use the technique, the form and technique, but they're going to do it in slow motion. They're taking batting practice actually in slow motion. There are a couple of things that we want to get out of this. First of all, to realize that when your stroke is correct, you don't have to rush to hit the ball. Rushing and reaching are out. The second thing that we want to get out of the slow motion BP is to have our hitters take whatever problems they may have with their hitting and to emphasize those problems. Seeing as there's no pressure to hit the ball, there's only pressure to get it right. Slow motion BP is one of the best drills. Hitters are amazed that they get the contact and how easy it is to hit even a fastball. We move our slow motion positions from normal at the plate closer to the pitching machine or the pitcher to get a faster pitch. We've actually had hitters hit slow motion BP against pitches that are in the 90s. Slow motion BP leads us off as we do our specialty drills in Agenda 3. The drive and pop drill is a rehearsal of us working our knob inside, working our pivot, and then coming into position and hitting. The actual effort that we'll put there is only 75%. We still, coming out of slow motion, we're going to just go a 75% stroke, but what we're going to do is rehearse the drive action because that's the action we want to get when the pitch comes. We do that in between pitches and we do it to make sure that we get inside the ball. The quick hips drill is the next drill. Part of this is 75% of the speed and the effort and the feel we want to have come out of the hips. 25% in the hands. What we tell hitters here, don't even think of the hands. What I want you to do is hit the ball with your belly button, hit the ball with your hips first, and let the hands do their thing. Believe it or not, our hands are auto-reactors. They'll go to the ball for us. 
What we have to train and what we have to do to be effective as a hitter is to get our hips to the ball first. So quick hips drill is only emphasizing hip action. As we go to the LCR drills, and you, we have a 95 here, which is 95% stroke, so it's our regular stroke, except what we're going to do here is move inside, outside, so that pitches are in. We will turn and pull those pitches. For an example, a right-hander would pull to left field, and then he would get an average position to the plate. He would hit the ball into center field, which really are the gaps. So this here is really left center field gap, right center field gap, and then he would hit to right field, where right field would be the oppo, so he'll get away from home plate, he'll do a hit flex, and he'll hit the balls to right field. We do these in a series of fours, and then we'll come back and do them in a series of ones. So we'll hit four to left, four into the gaps, four to right, and then after we do that, we'll go one left, one gap, one right, and we'll alternate these until we really get to be proficient at it. So LCR drills, they challenge the hitter. Many times we'll ask the hitter, tell us where you're gonna hit the ball and hit it there. And so they'll move inside and outside on the plate and drive the ball to the appropriate field. As we move to number five, which are our timing drills, the two or three concepts we wanna get out of these drills. One, the stride doesn't hit the ball. The stride merely puts us in position to hit the ball. And so our hitters will take a stride, maintaining their hands, keeping them in position to hit. The way the timing generally works, hard pitches versus soft pitches, would be fastball, stride, stroke. Something slower, stride, pause, stroke. So that there's that intermediate time when we hold on to our stride before we turn and hit the ball. And of course, it's easier to demonstrate that than it is to talk about it. But a couple of more coaching points. One, in the timing drills, this is where you work on go to the ball, which is the stride, make the ball come to you. It's a two-part system. Go to the ball, make the ball come to you. Go to the ball, make the ball come to you. What we mean is go to the ball with the stride, get the ball in a hitting position, and turn on it, drive the hands through the pitch. Our final phase is Power 10, and the Power 10 series is a series that determines how well we are getting contact and how well we are doing the skills that we need to do in order to be proficient when we hit live pitching. And in the Power 10 series, we might even run four of those in succession. And what that is, is it works this way. If a hitter hits the ball hard, he gets one point. If he doesn't hit it hard, he doesn't get any points, zero. If he swings and misses, he gets a minus one. And so at the end of 10 cuts, if his score is 80%, we consider that to be proficient. 70% would be a minimum. 90% excellent. 100% fantastic. And but 70% being no less than 70%. I have done tests with hitters, they didn't even know it, they would hit in tens, and we count hard hits, weak hits, that their average was 2.5. How can a hitter be a 400 hitter or a 350 hitter in baseball if he can't bat 300 against a machine or against batting practice pitching? So the specialty drills, this puts pressure and what we want out of this is to put some emotion in BP. Our hitters are not just standing up there, ratty tat hitting, but that they are moving in and out, they're moving closer to the pitch and farther away, they're slowing down their action, they're getting everything right, and they're putting together this specialty series, which will help them definitely to improve their hitting. So, Power 10 series concludes our specialty drills and concludes our introduction to our agenda. Now, let's go to the batting cages and see the agenda in action.
Let's go to the agendas, beginning with agenda one, I'll read drills. Number one, I'll loose body drill. Two, stride take. Three, drive take. Four, ABC. And five, form and technique. These are the five drills we'll work in agenda one. So we'll begin with loose body, and it's just a matter of getting into a soft body. Stand tall, soft body. Great to be excited to hit, not so great to be an excited hitter. We're reading the pitch all the way to the catcher. Get the head to where it's disciplined, that it stays on the pitch. We want to read bullseyes. And this is just a simple drill to get us started, which is our loose body take. As we go to the next drill, stride take, those are steps one, two, and three. We'll load, take a soft step forward, 30% weight on the front foot. We want to keep everything in proportion when we stride, so we work on our stride takes. Again, we're reading the pitch all the way to the catcher. We're seeing bullseyes. We're soft as we go to the ball. Nothing excited about how we do this. Our stride take is just a simple matter of reading the pitch in steps one, two, and three. As we go to the next step in the agenda, we'll work our drive takes. This is where we discipline our hands. We educate our hips. So we train our hips, discipline our hands. Now we're reading the pitch in the hit zone which is in front of us, not reading to the catcher. The hit zone goes back to the reader board. And what we want our hitters to do now is to identify the pitch as the ball comes through, whether it's a five or a two or an eight or whatever it might be. Drive takes primarily hip action, square to the pitch. We move to the next drill, ABC. Now we're going to start making two calls. We're going to read the pitch, and then we're going to say yes or no if the pitch is or is not contacted on sweet spot. We want all of our hits to be sweet spot. So as we bring the bat forward, we want to see the ball hit the bat in this drill. have no loops or sweeps or any of the other combinations in our stroke that we have a straight line to the ball. Our next drill, simple form and technique. We're going to let the ball go by, identify the pitch, and then we'll take a practice stroke, feeling all the good parts coming together. Form and technique, read the pitch, and we're going to stroke in the area where the pitch has just come through. We can take several swings as the pitch goes by, coming right through the zone where the ball was just pitched. Our agenda two now moves to the contact phase. AB snap, AB 50%, AB 75%, AB 95%, AB flex 95%, reverse or split hand drill. All of these drills are done in combination to get good contact. A simply is referable to stride. B is pivot. And C of, C, of course, is the snap of the hands as it goes to the ball. These three skills are in the middle of the poster. There are steps three, four, and five. A, B, snap, pivot, we'll wait for the pitch, and then quickly snap the hands, putting the bat head, the sweet spot, on the ball each time. Our hitters will then identify the pitch, and then identify whether or not he got percussion. A, B, 50, will now finish the stroke. Instead of snap, we'll simply come through the ball. 50% speed. We really want to go slow. We want to really feel the good contact. And we would stay with this drill until we were consistent in contact. 
all we're doing is running our ABs again. ABs, disciplining hands, training hips. 50% stroke simply sends us through the pitch with the bat moving to the ball in a straight line. We want to be calm and cool in these drills. No rushing, no reaching. As we move it up one level, now that we're satisfied with AB50, we move to AB75% in the stroke. Smooth strokes, bringing the bat through the ball, but increasing hand speed 25% so that we have a 75% stroke. You can see the contact here as the bat moves straight in a straight line to hit the pitch. AB75, it's the next step up from the 50%. And in this drill, we want to hit the ball well each and every time, working on a smooth stroke. As we pick it up to AB95%, which is the final phase, we never hit at 100%. We always say 5% for bat command. And then we add to that by going AB flex, which is the next drill. Flex simply meaning that our hips are only going to rotate part way, 45 degrees, and we're just going to snap the bat, hit everything to the opposite side. AB flex says we do not take a full pivot. We take a half of a pivot. And we'll just simply drive that pitch to the opposite field. AB flex is a good drill to get hitters started on learning how to hit the ball to the opposite field. We have one more drill. Actually, there are two drills. There's an option where we do reverse hand by simply reversing the top hand on the bat. The reason for this drill is to get the bottom hand to respond correctly. That is no barring, no spoking, but simply pulling the pulling the bat knob inside the ball, and then the top hand just pulling it through. Top hand giving a little push at the end, letting the bat go in this particular drill at the finish. Reverse hand drill is an advanced drill, and while at first you might get better bat speed, your contact might go down a little bit until you get used to the drill. This is an easier way to do the drill. The bottom hand is going to still be the hot hand in this drill, and it's going to pull the knob through as the top hand is soft on the bat. And we are working on getting that front arm to just pull through and drive the knob of the bat inside the ball. So these two drills will complete our agenda two as we finish two parts of our agenda and we get ready to go to the third part, which are our specialty drills. We have six steps in this agenda. All of these drills now will be batting practice drills, but done in a manner that will help the hitter. Slow motion, drive and pop drill, quick hips, LCR drills, timing drills, and our power 10 drills. Slow motion BP starts us off by simply getting into a slow motion mode. We will tell our hitters, just be soft at bat, no rushing, no reaching. Let the ball travel, see the pitch, soften everything up. In slow motion, it's okay to miss the pitch late, but it is not okay to rush or reach. So as we move into that phase of slow motion, we also can allow for our hitters to concentrate on correcting one problem. Let's say a hitter has a loop in his stroke. All right, so we don't care if you hit the ball or not. We care if you get it right. So no loops. Send the barrel straight to the ball. Whatever it is that you might have a problem with, this is the place to make that adjustment. We're only adjusting one problem, however, at a time. 
how hitters are just in a slow motion mode, where they're just absolutely being really soft, quick, and short to the ball. These pitches are coming in at about 60 miles an hour. So what we're going to do is move back and forth to create a faster or slower pitch while still maintaining slow motion BP. So we get a little closer and we'll hit in this at this position for three or four strokes and then we'll even move forward some more. So a 60 to a 70 to a 80 to maybe a 90 mile an hour pitch all struck with a slow motion mode where we're really soft, short to the ball, and getting our strokes off of now. Pretty good pitching. So this is a third phase of four steps that we'll move forward on the pitching machine. And whether it's a pitching machine or a regular pitcher, you can still work this drill in spite of the fact that it would be a different kind of a pitch. So now we are really up there, 90 miles an hour probably, and we're still gonna work slow on it, trying to keep everything in proportion, working on shot to the ball, and then getting along only after we make contact. Now that we've done four in each position, let's just move one in each position. So after we hit from the regular distance, we'll move up for one, we'll move up another one, and in this case here, we'll actually come back, we'll only do three parts. So we're basically slow, medium, and fast pitches. Trying to change each pitch so that we can adjust to the different speeds. One of the more difficult strokes to hit in this series is the one when we come back full distance. We have to let the ball travel to get a good contact. And so this is a good way to get a variety in speeds. And we do this in a slow motion content where we're just very slow and smooth and we get out of the rushing phase. The driver drill, an excellent drill to rehearse where you're going to send the hands. You put the hands in position and we just simply tell ourselves that's where we're going before we hit the ball. We never want to adjust the hands and then attack the ball. We want to go to the ball and then adjust. It's in this drill too that we understand that there are two phases. We're going to go to the ball and we're going to make the ball come to us. In a quick hip drill, all we ask our hitters to do is concentrate solely on the hips. Forget about the hands. Let the hands do their thing. The hands are auto responders anyway. They're going to react automatically. What we have to train is our, are our hips. Next is our LCR technique with our position adjustment. Inside, outside, and our normal, regular batting stance. Here we're away from the plate, so we are actually hip, doing a hip flex, hitting the ball to the opposite side. Hip flex says we pivot 45 degrees, half a pivot, so that our, we have enough bat, and we have enough thrust to hit the ball to the opposite side. So we're in LCR technique. You can see we get away from home plate. We get an outside pitch. We just simply drive it to the opposite side. The hips working for us so that they point about in direction of where the pylon was. Here we go from the right side again. Going to right field, making sure that we work the oppos in our LCR technique. As we move now to a different technique, 90 degrees, means we'll hit the ball either to left field or to center field. When we say center field, we don't exactly mean direct center field. We want to really get the ball in the gaps. Left center field and right center field. As well as pulling the ball, but keeping the ball fair down the left field line. So as we get closer to the play and the pitch is inside, then we'll turn 90 degrees and we'll hit that pitch to left field. LCR technique is a, just a critical drill that we have to do 
to learn how to hit the pitches that are inside or outside and to work on proper hip technique in order that we may be able to correctly hit each pitch. You can see as we look at this view from the off the front that we're getting a full turn on the pitches that are inside. Now we move to the timing drill and you see timing is pause stroke. So what we're doing here is we'll take a stride and we'll wait and hit the ball. Fastball would be stride stroke. A slow pitch is stride pause stroke where there's a slight pause before we turn on the ball. And finally our final drill, power 10. As we explained earlier, the power 10 we give points for hard hits. No points for weak hits and actually a minus point for swing and miss or swing and foul. So we want our hitters to get 80% and we think that's a good score. 70 at the minimum and certainly 90% or 100% is what we encourage. As we take it out to our model strokes on the field, trying to put everything together in a full and complete stroke. A matter of working on our strokes, and then we take it to the dance. This is a great, great system of drills to really incorporate the proper hitting habits and the agenda is as good as any set of drills you will ever do to accomplish this. We try to follow up those strokes in the cage on the field to play versus batting practice pitching, game speed. As we get our power tens, we work them inside, then, then we take it to the dance. You see the slow motion here as the bat comes through, good drive action, good contact, working on straight lines, the bat only swinging after we make contact. We take it to the field, keeping everything compact, getting the bat to go directly to the ball. This will conclude our agenda drills.